Hmm. Hmm. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to another video starring, you know, the one and only me. Now, of course, you guys know I love Thomas the Tank Engine and I love talking about the franchise. But I'm kind of run into this weird rut where I've been not having exactly a great idea of what I can talk about in a video. Because so much has already been said. Luckily, however, I got something to fix this remedy. Ugh, ugh. My small box of things Thomas to look at. Alright, let's see what's in here. Bachman Thomas. Reviewed it. Don't need to talk about that again. Wind up Tommy Thomas. Could maybe make a video about that one day. <gasps> one day. Just, not now. Uh, I need something simple. Something basic. <sighs> There's gotta be something else in this box, right? Uh, oh, there is. Yeah. This works. Alright, I guess we're gonna be reviewing Thomasaurus Rex. Yeah. So, pretty much from what I can tell from this, this book was released around 2006. I couldn't find a freaking author for the life of me. Book says nothing, it says nothing. Um, it's interesting that they made a story about Stephanie in 2006, like, of all characters. Though, then you flip to the next page, and I think you see why. Yeah, this was basically a toy set. <laughs> the whole purpose of this existing was to sell this fat, hideous Stephanie and this pretty cool fossil car. Now, I'm not a wooden railway collector, so before you ask, no, I don't have this. But any. Mm hmm And on the next page, we got the cover. Along with that, we got some legal stuff, Bridal Crop Productions, Hit Endorsement, um, Picture Book, Picture Back, that's the publisher. Like, no, Random House Inc. is the publisher. Picture Back is kind of like the series it's about. And, well, we're going to get on to reviewing the real book soon. Alright, so basically the whole gist of this story is that Thomas overhears Gordon and James discussing, like, how old Stephanie is, and that him and the fossil, um, truck, like, the fossil he's gonna be bringing to the museum are, like, made for each other. And, like, how much, like, they hate Stephanie, even though they all seem to really like him back in season four, so I don't know what happened there. Percy, he consults Percy about it. He's like, Thomas, did you see Jay? Did you see his special? And he's like, no, I didn't, Percy. He's like, oh, that's a real shame. Yeah, and Tom, he talks about how Stephanie is like one of the oldest engines on the island of Sodor. When he's not from the island of Sodor. <laughs> yeah, some real continuity issues with this um book, honestly. And he also talks about the tale of how he brought, like, Sir Topham Hat and his father, like, around the island using his coal truck right there. Yeah. Also, in the book, hang on, where is it? Um, it's right around here. You can see, as Sir Topham Hat's young, they call him Little Topham Hat. And that is, like, the weirdest thing to say, little Topham hat. Like, you say it enough times, you, you'll you also agree that it's pretty weird. For real, honestly. I don't really like saying it. 
So pretty much after Thomas fills us in on that story, he like goes up to Stephanie and talks to him about how the cool special is. And he's got buried treasure as well. He talks about how like he pulls a bunch of old things. So he like the treasure chest he has is one of the oldest things. But the fossil car is the oldest thing he's ever pulled. And I think this story wouldn't be so bad if they like used Edward. But the fact that they decide to change Stephanie to being one of the oldest engines on Sodor makes so many continuity issues, but whatever. Again, I actually think this would have been okay as Edward, but it's a little weird they went with Stepney. But to be fair, I respect them for using a more obscure character at the time, so I give them props to that. I just wish they made a story that benefited him. So yeah, Gordon and James are like being real jerks about it, because Stepney needs a needs a back engine, because apparently he can't pull two flatbeds oddly enough, and Gordon and James are too dignified to do that, let alone the fact that Gordon probably has to pull the express, and maybe James has to take, like, a small goods train, and then Thomas decides he'll do it, even though he probably has a branch line to run. Ah, who cares at this point? Ugh. So, yeah, Thomas pretty much agrees to be Stephanie's back engine, because, like, at first he was kind of doubting it, because he didn't want Gordon and James to make fun of him. Because apparently Gordon and James have never made fun of him in his life. Yeah. I, I, I totally believe that. So the two engines, like, double head the end. Well, no, front and back do it. So, you know, that's what happens there. Then, after, like, a page or two of driving, they make it to the museum. And Stephanie and Thomas are, like, really happy. The kids are cheering them on and, like... They're actually, like, really interested in the fossils and, like, the treasure chest because this was, like, you know, this was a pretty good time for kids as, you know, they actually liked stuff. And then there's also, like, a zoo there which, like, is pointed out, but it's, like, there's no reason for it to be there. Alright. Thomas and Stephanie are, like, giving big congratulations. But then there's, like, a little error right here because... If you read through this part right here, it may, like, you may need to pause because my hand's not all that great. It's staying still. It says here that Sir Topham Hat got dirty and was surprised, and, like, Thomas was surprised to see him dirty. But there are two issues with this. One, in the episode Tom, Lady Hat's birthday party, Topham got super dirty and Thomas saw him there and was, like, surprised the first time. So you're telling me he was surprised again? And second of all, Look at the picture. Topham is clean as frick. <laughs> There's nothing dirty here. I don't know why they made that mistake. They just forgot to add the filth on him. And then they have this ceremony, and, like, Topham and Thomas are, like, all proud. And then it ends on a pretty good note, um, with all these. And no-hit advertisement. Instead, just a bunch of advertisements for books that probably, like, cost 2 to $3. So that was Thomas Saurus Rex. You know what? Not a bad book. Not like a bad babe. Not a bad children's book. It's okay for what it is. Oh, it's a little weird right here, for example. Uh, here. Like, Henry is on the cover, but he's nowhere in the book. He, I skimmed through it. His part is replaced with Gordon, so I don't know why he's on the cover, but it's entertaining and it's interesting. I like that they use Stephanie, but to be fair, this is kind of just a product placement. I mean, product itself looks pretty mediocre, so... I mean, the book look, the book is seems slightly better. I'll say that. I've never had the product, so I can't say it's like a bad product. But overall, it's an okay, like, children's book. I just wanted to give some light to some of the... Like, you know, not Audrey series books. Like, these came out during, like, the 2000s, during, like, when Hit took over. Um, I only paid, like, $3. You'll see here in a minute if I can get it. Uh, right here, you'll see I only paid $3 for it. Like, back in 2006. It's not that bad. I had this, like, when I was four. I thought it was, I thought it was okay then. It wasn't too big on it when I was younger. Not too big on it now. Want to read it? Go ahead. Although there is one thing, one thing that's really interesting. This was on the um on an app that like Thomas stories were like reread to kids like with Keith Wickham's narrating, 
And yes, Keith Wickham's did a dub over this book. And what makes that interesting is that Stephanie was actually given a voice. So we now have like what the closest way to hearing what Stephanie would sound like in CG in that. So if you want to check that out, it's pretty interesting because I did. And Stephanie has a pretty okay voice from Keith Wickham's. Not the best, but to be fair, he's narrating the book as opposed to like just voicing the character. So, anyways, that's my review on Thomas Solaris Rex. I hope you guys enjoy. I wanted to see if people would be interested in a more different kind of review, because no one ever reviews, like, stuff like this. So, if you want to see more of these in the future, you're going to have to tell me what books you want to see me review, because I don't have many more. Well, actually, some are DVD extras, so if you want me to review them that way, I could. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!